Good evening. The school board meeting of Tuesday, September 12th is called to order. And the first item on the agenda is adjustments to agenda. Are there any adjustments? Seeing none, we will go on. The second item on the agenda is approval of August 22nd school board minutes. Are there any corrections? Anne? Um, there was one on page 4B under item 7B. It said that um, we were talking about an unpaid leave of absence for the 94-95 school year. I think that should be 95-96 school year. Yeah. Are there any other corrections? Seeing none, the minutes stand approved. The next item on the agenda is comments by high school and middle school reps. From the high school, we have Tina Pendleton and Megan Cunningham. Hi, I'm Tina Pendleton. And I'm Megan Cunningham. And the school year started off great this year. We first, in the first day of school, we had an assembly. And you can tell how much, we're, how bigger we are because the freshman class coming in was bigger than the seniors. We had about 510 students and we couldn't even all fit sitting down. We had people standing up along the wall. And um, we're respecting the building a lot more. They did, over the summer, did a lot of renovations. And they painted and they made it look really great. And Mr. Ray just told me that I didn't really realize too much, but we're really taking care of it this year. And there's recently a new rule that there's no food or drink above the first floor. And I think that's helping out a lot, too, because there's no trash or anything up above the cafeteria. Um, our new library opened. And I think as of Monday, the students have been using it. We're still waiting for some, for some shelves for the reference section. But other than that, everything's in. Um, the new computer lab isn't quite ready yet. We're waiting for a, new, for a few new computers. And on Thursday night at 5.30, behind the high school in the picnic area, there's going to be a freshman cookout. And parents, to students, teachers are all welcomed. And it's like an introduction night for the freshmen so they can feel more comfortable about the high school. On Thursday morning, we have our first SAC meeting of the year. So. Um, our sports have also started. Well, they've been going since mid-August. And it looks like we'll have pretty successful fall season this year. And homecoming weekend is coming up, and it's going to be on the 22nd and the 23rd. And so far, I know that there is going to be a tent in the uh, bus parking lot. And it's on, um, they're having a tent with the BLM hosting it as the DJ. And there's supposed to be a tailgate party, I think. I'm not positive about that. But they have a lot of new plans coming along. I know a lot of parents have been working hard to organize it. And the, um, the senior motto this year was, make a difference. Thank you. Any questions from board? Comments? Thank you. Charlie. Oh, Charlie. Not Sorry. from them. Um, it had to do with the high school. I believe the music, there was a music boosters organization forming. And I believe they had a meeting on Monday. Has anybody attended that could tell us? Uh, I didn't attend it, but uh, I understand it was a very good turnout. About 24 people showed up. They are really being proactive about getting the music boosters off the ground. Uh, they're going to be a, a manning a booth at homecoming and uh, I guess at uh, open house as well. Thank you. Um, I think we'll have middle school reps next meeting. Is that right? <coughs> Thanks. The next item on the agenda is communications. Connie? Okay. Um, I would want to make a note that um, you may recall last spring we talked about Steve Conley, um, a middle school science teacher, having been a uh, semifinalist for the Teacher of the Year. Um, I don't know if you really call that a competition or not, but selection of Teacher of the Year. Uh, he's been notified that he is now one of three finalists, so that we will be supporting him and wishing him um, lots of of uh, support for his uh, final go-round. Whatever happens, we're proud of him. Um, also, I included in your packet some information. Uh, you have a, a letter from Charlotte Hanna. Teacher was on sabbatical last year, thanking you for that opportunity and telling you a little bit about um, how invaluable that was for her. We've included um, a tentative outline of the fall main school management uh, 
two-day conference for school board members as well as school administrators. And uh, I might just make a note for the record that the school board, along with our teachers who were on the negotiating team last year, have been invited to present because of the success of the win-win or facilitated negotiation. So I think some of us will be involved in that. Um, and yesterday I was called, the nurses called me and asked me to alert you to the fact that there is um, a conference coming up that I believe they would like to um, attend on HIV prevention education. So you have a little information on that. It also includes an invitation to a school board member or any administrators. Um, and it does give you some idea what that would be. That is not a cost factor to the system. It is one of the issues at the school that the State Department uh, does sponsor, although we have some HIV education in place. I'm sure it is something that um, we could all look at. It. I, you don't have to tell me right now, but any school board member is interested in being a part of that. I have some additional information here that the nurses gave me and be happy to share it with you. And the final thing is I received a communication from the American Lung Association uh, calling to everybody's attention. Federal law now prohibits smoking by everyone anywhere in school buildings. And also noting that many schools have gone further by banning smoking and other tobacco use on all grounds, indoors and outdoors. Um, that is really what our policy is too. Um, so that they're offering us through that American Lung Association a free packet of materials on school tobacco free policies, including information about the new Maine law making possession of tobacco products by minors illegal. And for schools entirely tobacco free, they are offering a large outdoor tobacco free sign, uh, one per school, which they tell me, it points out here is quite heavy. We could pick it up uh, in Augusta or when we come, those of us who are going to the conference. Um, if you think that would be an appropriate thing that you would like to have, I will fill this in. And you, again, don't have to respond at the moment, but I see no reason why we wouldn't. Just to remind, it is a problem when people come to sports events um, that we, we have a kind of a chronic issue of trying to remind people that not only the buildings, but the grounds are tobacco free, They're supposed to be. And those are my communications. Um, Priscilla, I think has a communication. Uh, I got uh, a conference notification today about school law in Maine. It's on November 16th, and I haven't really looked it over, but it seems to cover student attendance issues, student suspension expulsion, search and seizure in schools, student dress codes, school and religion, special education, and civil tort liability. And maybe I can give it to Connie, and uh, she can make copies and send it to everybody. It's Thank you. November 16th. Any other communications, Charlie? Um, <clears throat> on September 21st, I will be attending a full meeting uh, as an advisor, your representative advisor, to the new Portland Arts and Technology High School, which pl replaces the PBRTC designation. Thank you. Any others? Seeing none, we'll go on. The next item on the agenda is superintendent's report. Connie? And the first item is a report on the fourth grade MEA test results. Um, you did have information in your packet. Uh, Lyle Kramer, guidance counselor at the middle school, will um, summarize or point out some of the other issues. And um, also, I did include some of the student actual samples of student work that you might like to file. Okay, thank you. Um, what I'll do is just touch upon the highlights and then respond to any questions you folks may have. Uh, in grade four last year, all of our students took the test. Uh, one student is not included in the report because she, the uh, person was on an extended vacation during the makeup time after missing the writing test, so she was not able to make that up. And consequently, if you miss a test, all of your, all of your scores are thrown out for the school averages. So all of our special needs students are, are included in the score, the average scores. Um, all of the average scores this year are up quite a bit. I listed them there for you in reading, it's 400. Remember, this is a scaled score with a range of 100 to 400. 
Uh, reading was 400, writing 325, math 400, science 355, social studies 310, humanities 340, and health was 280. Um, I've not had a chance to follow this up with advanced systems, but uh, I noticed an interesting fact in the, in the uh, scores that were published in the Sunday Telegram. Oh, I could not find any scores that were much higher than 280 or 295. So I don't understand that, but I'll try to get mm. track down that information for you. So uh, even though that's not as high as our other scores, it was equally high or about as high as any other school in the state. Our special needs students did real well this year, many of them scoring equal to the uh, state average, and in many cases, above the state average. One of the things that you'll notice in some of the, uh, some of the charts that I present for you, um, because the uh, state is switching to four categories of achievement, um, they don't, for those subdivisions, they don't give the scale scores, so I have selected the percent of students scoring above at basic level or above. Um, the last chart that I presented for you shows the boys' scores compared to the girls' scores. And this year in the fourth grade, like the students in the eighth grade, the um, gender difference is minimal and kind of split between the boys and the girls. We had some discussion, if you recall, back in the springtime about that, and, and the pattern that we saw in the springtime is very similar to what happened in the fourth grade, and I would suspect that my, uh, or my comments would be the same about this as was in the springtime. The, uh, the other thing that I would like to point out is, uh, in the springtime too, you remember Superintendent Goldman and I questions, some of the changes, and the level of difficulty on the questions. And, and I'd like to point out that because we scored the high, very high, and the highest in many cases, it still doesn't necessarily mean that this is a good test. My, my uh, comment is that we probably did real well on a pretty poor test. And that concludes my remarks. Thank you. Questions from the board? Comments? Carla? Um, we had a sample of some of the reading passages and examples of different answers, advanced or novice or basic. Um, this is a time test, correct? Uh, well, no, it isn't. Okay. It's, it makes it very difficult to administer because there is no clear time of it. What, what the guidelines suggest is allowing the students the amount of time that the, average, that the average student should be expected to take, and then allow up to 50% more. But if they've started certain things, you don't you let them finish that. So it becomes very ambiguous and, and quite difficult to, to administer because of the varying time. So my thought when I was looking at this is there's such a wide range of reading ability, and some of these passages were quite long. So I think it could take some kids quite a while to get through a passage before they even got to the questions. But it sounds like there really is adequate time. But that isn't the real key because for those students who have to struggle to read, mm -hmm. they totally, my experience has been that they pretty much totally get lost and if they got to the questions, they wouldn't even know where to begin on the questions. Right. So, so even if they had more time, right. it really doesn't, help them very much because the, if the reading difficulty is so difficult that it takes them that long to struggle through the mechanics of the reading to comprehend the, to even comprehend what the question is mm -hmm. asking, and, and some of your teachers will probably verify this, that uh, it's so difficult that some of the kids don't understand the concept that the question is asking and what really is, is the point of the question. And that probably would be reflected in the way they answered them. Clearly. Right. Keep in mind that uh, that the average score is less than 50% by far. Mm -hmm. In the math, for instance, uh, the range of each question is from one to four. 
and the averages would be the average scores for those eight questions are two three one two one eight one six one nine two one one seven and one three so in many cases one and a quarter or one and a third uh, questions out of I mean points are awarded to the average student out of four four potential points what that does is that that means and that's related to why we probably did quite well what that does is is narrow your band your, your bell-shaped curve becomes very narrow so if you do a little bit better you get way ahead of quite a few kids real quickly because not many kids you know you don't have in terms of points for each question, you don't have to go very far or get very many correct before you have a real high score compared to other students. Other questions, Keith? I was curious on the first page, the, the number scores for 94, 95, 400, 325, and 400 and so forth. Uh, how those numbers were arrived at if the test is completely different than the previous year, were they somehow interpreted by us or by the state? Uh, the the test is not completely different. That even though it's different, but it's not completely different. Okay. By that I mean they used to have they used to have four they used to have these four point questions that required an open ended response for about fifty percent of the questions, mm -hmm. and the other fifty percent, for the most part, in reading, were multiple choice. Right. What they've done is switch to all open-ended questions. And the way that they arrive at those kind of scale scores is instead of, instead of looking at, instead of looking at uh, the number of multiple choice questions correct, they've simply, for each, for each uh, question, they want one of four different scores, one, two, three, and four. They simply add those all up, and then in terms of reporting out, they treat those numbers exactly as the same as the number correct. Other questions? Anne? Have you heard whether there are going to be any more changes to the test in response to some of the criticisms <clears throat> that teachers here and elsewhere had uh, last year? I did get a notice today from the State Department um, summarizing some of what we have heard before. Uh, much of the change that they are anticipating making will be in format to make it more user friendly. Um, and frankly, they're going to use some of the suggestions that teachers made uh, on all three of the tests. Some simple things such as having a space for the question right where the question is and not having as has been the case in the past the questions and then a separate booklet and for fourth graders that was particularly burdensome to keep track of things and so on. So they are definitely going to streamline the administration of the tests. As far as the questions themselves, um, the questions at the fourth grade level uh, mirrored some of the concerns that the questions um, were really at a reading level that far exceeded, or at least a few of them anyway, far exceeded what would be the normal curriculum. Therefore, although it, that would have the factor of streaming out a few distinguished kids, it certainly puts a whole lot of kids at a, at a disadvantage uh, and doesn't give us any useful information. Uh, after all, the task is so difficult that only a very few kids can do it. It does tell us who the few kids are who can do it, but it doesn't give us a whole lot of useful feedback to teachers about how the curriculum is going. So they said they, uh, they have, in fact, put in place a couple of um, uh, of groups, in fact, Lyle and I attended a couple of those meetings, uh, seeking feedback and are going to try to get that back into the questions. Um, I think the reality is, of course, that the idea of performance-based testing, uh, which frankly I approve of, uh, is very much with us. I just think we need to be realistic that this is difficult in some respects. And I think also what I am particularly concerned about is whether or not our staff 
is, is aware of what, in fact, the major issues are that people are looking for. For instance, when the uh, essay form writing samples came out a few years ago, teachers themselves scored those, and it became a staff development exercise for teachers. They began to understand better how you would deal holistically with uh, essays, and then they could actually take that understanding and turn it around as a teaching uh, form. One of the problems with the content area essay questions that are now being used in the performance tests is that the teachers will not be trained to do that. They have trained the, um, at the present format anyway, is to train people, in some cases retired scientists and what have you, to use a rubric and to correct the questions that way rather than using it as a staff development exercise for teachers. Um, this leaves us somewhat uh, unsure of how we can use this feedback to help us um, kind of close the loop between what the test is what the state performance test is looking for and what, in fact, curriculum uh, is actually dealing with. And um, so those are some of the issues, some of which are still out there and will have to be dealt with on an ongoing basis. Um, I thought you might be interested in me and my veggies and a few of the others. And um, certainly, there are some obvious differences in the answers. When you read them very carefully, however, I suspect you will find that some of those answers are, those differences are not as obvious as they look. Um, et cetera. But. And to that end, I will be visiting with most of the teams in the elementary school and the middle school to provide that kind of feedback so that teachers do develop a good awareness of what kind of challenges the kids face both at the fourth grade level and at the eighth grade level. And, not, and not meeting with just fourth and eighth grade teachers because this is a school-wide test. It measures what students have been able to achieve over four years uh, of their entire school career. I, I did forget to put into your packet the answer. Remember last year when we were talking about this, I told you how puzzled I was by the question for fourth graders that had the rock that had to be moved um, and so forth. And they did include some samples and the distinguished answer, which I thought was pretty neat from a fourth grade student, still is far from a physical answer to the question. So that suggested to me that they were satisfied with answers that were a long way from what one could call a true answer to the question, which I think is a tacit admission that the question was much too difficult for the sample of kids taking it. But we'll see. Those are sort of what I hope are growing pains and that they will do a better match this year. Other questions or comments? Yes, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, moving on. Yep. Um, opening day. Well, we um, we are certainly relieved to be in the buildings. <laughs> and anybody watching this or anybody involved, uh, you are uh, invited to come uh, to Pond Cove Middle School. Uh, please identify yourself in one of the offices so that we aren't. I'm not asking. I see the principal sitting over here. I really am not trying to bring the entire community in on one morning. Uh, but um, we also will be having open houses. Um, we are really waiting for our formal dedication ceremony until the project is finally finished, which will be, we hope, by Thanksgiving. So just to give you a target date that we will be able to do that. And we're certainly looking forward to having um, all kinds of people uh, celebrate getting this thing done. Um, we did start the year also, by the way, for those of you who weren't there, with handing out the appreciation mugs. You may recall part of your contract uh, negotiations with te teachers was to establish a routine where, um, for years of longevity, various um, recognitions pieces will be in place. And, and since this was year one of that, we, we gave out. How many mugs did we give out? It was. Like 185? <coughs> something like that. It was a lot. And some, some of you were there. It was a lot of fun. Um, in fact, Joe Conroy, who is one of our senior, senior members, who actually is retired but does teach one class for us, uh, told me this morning he was in to pick up his mug. And he said, you know, for 32 years I came every opening day. I was always there. And this year I didn't come. And he was, of course, the last. <laughs> person to receive the mug, and so we had a little celebration this morning, but um, I know he thinks he missed something, which he did. It was, it was really nice. 
Um, I think that there are no remarkable, I'm very happy to say there are really no remarkable conditions. We've had a few glitches about this or that and the other. Um, but we've heard tonight from the high school, they were feeling upbeat about things. And uh, uh, I think we're really feeling like the end is in sight as far as construction and looking forward to having most of our focus go on academics. Okay. That's it. Any questions? Great. No, you no, no question, but that really was a lot of fun handing out those mugs. And what was quite extraordinary was to see how many hands we had to shake that morning. <laughs> it, it's, really, it's, it's really incredible what um, a lot of people have been here a very long time, and I think it speaks very well mm -hmm. um, for people's loyalty to the system. So that was nice for us to see. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the other thing that was really heartwarming, we had all of our people there. That is, we had bus drivers, we had custodians, we had women who work in the uh, cafeteria. We had um, our teacher aides and assistants, although most of those do not have longevity because, in fact, that is a kind of a turnover space. Um, but I thought that was nice. It was sort of like a community celebration. Now we should give them to the school board. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was what I was going to ask, having handed out 90-something of those mugs. <laughs> I'm just sitting here thinking that the two of you uh, should have had a mug. Well, we'll, we'll take care of that. Um, okay, moving on. The National Science Foundation grant, which uh, you are aware of, and I gave you some information in your packet, I think the thing that we realize, um, a number of people have been telling me how hard it is to get these. I knew we had worked on it, but I didn't realize that it was quite that um, unusual. At any rate, we have a lot of work ahead of us this year, and um, in the preliminary conversations I've had with people from the other school districts as well as our own people, this is an opportunity for us to develop a, um, a model for how we do this kind of curriculum work, although the emphasis will be on staff development opportunities for teachers. At the elementary level, uh, the process requires us to do a lot of data collection, analysis of what, in fact, our programs are. Um, it will expose us to the same kind of information from our two neighboring school districts and uh, give us a lot of, of uh, thoughtful opportunities for planning. Um, whether we get the major grant or not, we will have a blueprint that we can move forward with. And in science uh, in particular, this feels really good for us to get a handle on it. I do want to point out, it, although it says science grant, it is um, uh, also targeting math, education, and the use of technology. It's one of those things where the good news is you got the grant, the bad news is you got to do it. <laughs> it's a lot of work. Um, update on construction project. I, I haven't got a whole lot to say on that, and I'm not sure that Sue does at this point. Uh, we're, uh, so much of what's going on now is really obvious. I do want to remind the board as well as our audience that uh, we're at the punch list stage for much of the uh, building. Punch list simply means that it's a long list of uh, imperfections. And uh, just in case anybody's worried, we do have retainage. Obviously, money is held back until we're satisfied that the job has been done, and that's a process that our architectural firm, as well as all of our internal uh, controls, will be working on. And some of that's going to take a while, but um, because we have to live in the building and use it even while some of those things are going on. The high school gym is actually moving faster than we had thought. We will be refinishing that, that floor. Um, and we are checking on the bleachers. Um, that's uh, a safety check. Those are the original bleachers, I believe. Do you know, Sue? I think they are. Pretty sure they are. Um, so we may be coming back to you with some less than pleasant updates on that, but you know those are things that can be fixed. And the brickwork on the outside of the 30s building is being repointed, will be repointed, and uh, so hopefully, really bring that up up to speed. Be nice to see that done. That's pretty much it. Other than uh, the middle school library, uh, plan to start moving things back in tomorrow. Good. Great. Okay. Yep. And then you asked us to, uh, beginning last spring, to check on and in August at our meeting to come back to you with school procedure for Pledge of Allegiance as we were reviewing policies. 
Um, I did note in the agenda notes um, that at the middle school, and I've subsequently discovered that it's also true at Pond Cove, we really don't have all our brackets up and flags up and will not be doing any regular pledge um, routine until that is accomplished. Uh, we are certainly planning on making sure that this is kind of a curriculum area too, that children do know the words, and I, I appreciate my conversation with Pond Cove Principal Tom. Children need to know what the words mean, so we don't want to just teach them uh, an empty routine. We really will be working on that in a variety of ways and let you know about it. But first, we got to get the flags up. Thank you, Connie. Any questions? Next item on the agenda is school board subcommittees and reports, finance subcommittee. Charlie? Uh, we met this evening at 6.30 in the chamber conference room. Um, we reviewed the computer lease for district-wide technology plan, which we will vote on later in our meeting. Um, we looked at a school department vehicle replacement schedule. We asked our business manager to, to bring all that data together so that we could have some idea for future budgeting on what our, our vehicle replacement should be. Um, we looked at a pending workers' compensation claim. We reviewed the appropriation report and signed warrants. Um, in the computer lease profile <clears throat> that the business manager handed out to us at our business meeting, um, the technology plan actually called for a five-year plan, and in the first three years was actually the acquisition of a lot of hardware. Um, the technology um, committee decided last year that maybe we should poss we really should probably concentrate on outfitting most of our three computer labs since they both all three would be renovated and, and, and up in place. Originally, we had looked at the high school of one computer per department, a half computer for the library expansion, one third for classrooms in the middle school, and one half of the, of the middle school lab. And we would finish the grade levels at Pond Cove and bring up a half a lab. The Pond Cove actually, through the Parents Association, has brought uh, the grade levels up to full speed. The middle school is not that's one area we will have to work on is to, to actually work on getting computers into the classroom. But we will bring, be bringing up all three high school, middle school, and Pond Cove computer labs to, to full efficiency with, through a leasing purchase of a three-year lease purchase agreement. We actually will be purchasing about 45 Power Max and about 10 IBM Pentium um, computers. Um, in the high school, as far as classroom, uh, with the acquisition of, of the IBMs, we are actually, and the move of the computer lab to, to outside the high school library, we're still going to maintain a room, the present uh, computer lab room, for use by the science and math departments, and six computers will stay there. Um, when the industrial arts Wing gets their, um, their seven new Macs, what Gary's plan is, is to release seven of the, those seven, seven of his older Macs to the classroom. So he is actually going to start integrating into the classrooms. So the one area we're really going to have to start in future budgeting is to look at the middle school classrooms as far as computer purchasing. And also, thanks to the Pond Co Parents Association, since we had only budgeted a half a lab, they have a they have a, uh, entered an ag agreement with us to also purchase 12 additional Power Max to bring that um, computer lab up to, up to speed and have made a commitment over three years to do that, and we thank them. Any questions or comments? The next item is School Building Committee. Charlie? Report. Okay, the school building committee met on August 31st in the new Pond Cove Middle School Cafetorium. Um, we reviewed some so the minutes and also uh, 
uh, corrected, made some corrections to, to those minutes. Um, Sue Weatherby gave us an update on the moving status of the building. Uh, since this was a week before school was to start, uh, there was a lot going on, even while we were meeting. Um, the committee also discussed a process for additional grounds plannings because there already we're getting requests as memorials and those type of things to, to plant trees and, and shrubbery. So both the town manager and the, um, the superintendent of schools will sometime in the future convene kind of an ad hoc group to develop some kind of a process so that we have, have some handle on what's happening to, to our grounds. Um, we have also asked the architects to get a final schedule from the contractor and um, on that to give the building committee a priority list of items that are not yet finished. As um, Connie alluded to earlier, the committee also discussed the need to refinish the gym floor and I believe in our current budget we are also looking at refinishing the industrial arts wooden floor and the band room and the projected cost is about 12,000 um, and again we ask for a safety check to be done on, on all the bleachers. Uh, we reviewed our contingency issues um, and we had asked at the previous meeting for the architect to go out and to get a bid on the parapet repairs and the masonry repointing to the 1930s building. Um, we were very pleased when, when the architect came back at this meeting because the proposed building parapet repairs were estimated to be about 77,000 and the actual bid came in at about $62,800. Masonry repointing was proposed to be to to expect to expend about sixty to seventy thousand, and actually that bid came in at thirty two thousand five hundred. Um, we commended the architect for that extra effort because it helps our contingency quite a bit. Um, Another pleasant, we haven't had too many pleasant, <laughs> pleasant meetings because every time we've had a meeting, there's always some structural uncertainty that's uncovered, which has cost us some money. That's one of the reasons why we've carried such a, a large contingency for this project because the majority of it is uh, rehab. Uh, the middle school gym lockers, which were originally estimated to be about $25,000, actually came in at around sixteen. So we had three pleasant surprises for those members who were not there at the meeting. Because we did not have a quorum of voting members, we had plenty of people there from our advisory committees, but we only had two voting members, so our, our building chair had to do a telephone poll. Um, we felt very comfortable to be able to release the additional casement casework that's proposed for classrooms and also to go ahead with, with the awarding of the bids for the parapets and the masonry um, repointing. So it was a very positive meeting. And our next meeting it will be September 28th in the Pond Cove Media Center. We also took a tour afterwards, so it was nice. They were starting to um, put the, the Pond Cove Media Center into order, and it was very nice. Thank you, Charlie. I have a question. question. Yes. Uh, when, when you said the casework, is that in the elementary school? The, the classrooms will get cupboards and counters? and They'll get additional um, bookshelves, that type of thing, uh, casework under the windows. And after my comment, the previous meeting about the amount of clutter, <laughs> I hope that this will take care of some of that. <laughs> Keith? Uh, Charlie, just to, um, to commend the building committee and architects and so forth for keeping all of this on budget uh, in light of all of the press that has been going on for, for the, the city of Portland. I, I think it really deserves a accolades. We really feel that we are going to be able to carry forth enough of a contingency to take care of, of unknowns that might come up after we've taken ownership of, of the building. So that puts us in a much healthier 
financial state than probably we felt three months ago. So it was a very good meeting as far as <laughs> the dollar amounts. <laughs> Rubbing it in. Yes, <laughs> very positive. Connie. I really would like to um, echo that. I think it's really important for the community to understand that this uh, building committee went into this project knowing that there were a lot of unknowns. Uh, when you're dealing with old buildings, that's always obvious, but you simply have to uh, make provisions. Um, this building is a no frills building. There are some kinds of things that we would all have liked to add from educational amenities of one kind or another. But I think the casework story is important because it says, and, and sometimes this was a heated discussion, um, and the teachers have been really wonderful about this, that it isn't that, that anybody wanted teachers to go without casework, but that this was a time when we had to fix structural issues, and we had a very, very limited budget considering the amount of square footage we had. So we appreciate the fact that now we have been able to release that money. It's not a princely sum, and it won't result in the, um, probably in as much casework as people would like, but at least it's something. And it does represent our commitment to be on time and on budget in this project, and the committee was really very instrumental in doing that. But I also want to point out and thank the teachers for their patience in this. They have understood and um, been willing to, you know, kind of roll with the punches, understanding the first things first. And we truly have to commend both Sue Weatherby and the custodial staff for being able to pull the buildings together essentially in a week, in less than a week, to make them presentable so that people could actually move into the classrooms. I mean, it just, it's unbelievable the amount of time and dedication that these people put in. And it starts with our leadership. Well, I think the, um, again, speaking of Sue, uh, I don't know, I've known a number of people involved in school building projects. I've never known anybody who spends weekends, um, nights, and pushes boxes around with the custodians in order to do that. Uh, so I, I really think the community owes everybody involved a, particularly so. Um, but also the administrators were there a lot. They pushed boxes around to it, don't leave anybody out. Um, it's been a team effort and a very heartwarming one. And I also want to, to commend the school uh, administration and staff. Um, they are really getting to the kids. I mean, listen to the high school students tonight. Mm -hmm. That message is getting across that we are going to take care of these buildings. And I've been through all three buildings in the past week just kind of sort of sailing through in some cases, um, and it is notably being picked up. Um, we do, we know we're realistic. We've lived with kids all our lives. We know that this is gonna fade, but we're gonna keep working at it, and we're going to make sure that we can assure the community that we have those processes. And, and we are grateful. <laughs> Carla. I know that message is also getting through to the middle school because I had a parent of a middle schooler tell me that within the first couple of days of school, their daughter came home and said, they are really making us pick up this year. <laughs> so it's obviously something that's a noticeable difference to the kids. Thanks. Good. Thank you, Sue, for all your hard work. We really appreciate it. Um, technology committee. <laughs> Charlie, is that you again? <laughs> I'm sorry to be a one-man show today. <laughs> um, yesterday, September 11th, the Stick Technology Steering Committee um, met. Um, we kind of did a review of where we are as far as the steering committee itself. Um, Scott was there, our business manager, to get some, some idea of what was happening with the computer lease. Um, we talked about our, what, what was happening with networking. Um, the software has been ordered for our bulletin board. We discussed what we would call it. Um, a proposal was Kate Enet, um, as, a, as an example. Um, we talked about a little bit about the staff and resource people that we would need to be able to implement our technology plan. Um, at this time, in our five-year plan, we really are not at the point of where we are, would be able to hire someone. So I guess we will have to look at release time for what we have in-house. Um, 
we looked at, we discussed a little bit about staff development. Um, teachers and staff are ready for the second level of their um, staff development on computer usage. Um, Randy, Gary, and Andrew, who are building um, technology reps, are, are a subcommittee and will start again um, that program. Um, we talked a little bit about the administrative software package that but the high school is still waiting for uh, feedback. And again, talked about the ability of these systems to be able to network from one building to another. Pond Cove and Middle School, we think, because they both have some type of, of uh, uh, Mac program, are, are probably going to be easier to meld. The high school is still looking at an AES plan, but I'm sure there are, are our gates out there that would help us to, uh, to integrate into a system-wide approach. Um, we reviewed who, our maintenance repair contract, which will be with Kim Young of CRC. He will be coming every other week for 20 scheduled visits for three hours a visit, and will be available for um, uh, non-schedule hours anytime that we need them. Um, we are looking at sending to the school board uh, policy subcommittee some ideas on looking at software policy, those kind of issues. And um, we will be meeting again on the 16th of October and they're going to rotate the meetings, and this will be in the new middle school library at 3.15. Any questions, Anne? I just have a comment as far as uh, technology and the curriculum itself goes, and that is, um, actually, I was having a conversation with Gail today, and after, uh, and about the experience of actually her son going to college and his experience with where he was expected to be with computer use. Um, and it got me to thinking afterwards that, um, you know, we've talked about trying to get feedback from the students after they've moved on, and we definitely need to do that. But I think while we're in the process of doing that, I think it might be useful if we could, there must be a way for the guidance department to compile some, some kind of information on what colleges are looking for in terms of, you know, computer literacy um, of our graduates so that we can really start putting into place um, a curriculum that makes sure kids are prepared because I don't like to hear stories about kids having to take remedial classes or not being able to, you know, maybe keep up with their classes the way maybe they could um, if they were where they should be. And I think it's kind of, a, it's one of those things that we can do kind of top down. And I think we're still too much in the process of, you know, teaching introductory type courses at, at all levels of the school. So it just occurred to me this afternoon, maybe one way of going about that is see what colleges expect and then we can work backwards from there, so. One of the suggestions last year from the steering committee was it, looking at curriculum and where this particular steering committee could be of use was to look at the research strand, which is a, a goal of the board and actually the mechanics of being more involved with the mechanics of that, which I think would help right. those students be prepared for what. Well, I guess I need to say something here. <laughs> um, I've spoken to Rick DeFusco and Ann and Skip Crosby and a couple other people through the last week um, after dropping my son off at college. And I had sat in on a um, demonstration English class and just came away so excited about the possibilities of what a computer can do for a classroom and how alive and vital it can make any discipline. Um, and wondered if uh, there wouldn't be some way that we could uh, set aside a, a professional day, and I, I'm not sure what's happened with the professional days that's coming up, but for the entire um, staff, K-12, to show them, with an outside person, to show them the, the possibilities, the vision of, of what can happen with technology and what is available today in, for classrooms and kind of give an infusion of energy and um, a dream that people can work towards and perhaps um, bring about some of our changes. 
So I'm all for technology development. Great, thank you. Uh, next item is Staff Development Committee. Um, Connie, do you want to speak on that? And Connie and I went to the first meeting, was it yesterday? Yes. Right. Um, and the, this is a, a, a committee that has both a short-term and a long-term focus. The short-term focus is we did, in fact, add two days to the teacher uh, work year through negotiations um, so that since that, those are two new days, um, we agreed through that process that a group with teacher representation as well as uh, school board representation would meet to discuss, okay, what's the best way to use those days, what kind of process would we use, and so on. Obviously, it is very clear to us as we get into that that there's a long-term focus also, which is um, what is the vision for staff development. Uh, we have been fairly building by building, although we have some projects that are very clearly systemic, and uh, this is a good time to take a new lease on life on all of those issues. Um, I haven't had a chance to talk to everybody in that committee, but I, I did follow up some of the suggestions that were made yesterday and have um, called a um, consultant who does work with staff development who will be with us at our meeting next week. I thought that we, although we had a lot of good ideas, we were sort of all over the ballpark, and I thought this is another one of those examples where getting people who have uh, taken several steps beyond where we happen to be um, is a good idea. So. Um, we will be sorting that out and getting back to people. It is an exciting opportunity, though, and technology is very much, I think, what's one of the topics we certainly talked about. The next item is the policy subcommittee. Anne? Um, well, you all received in your um, packet a summary of um, our meeting on August 23rd, but just for the benefit of the public, um, since we've had kind of a long time, we haven't talked about policy. I'll just go over. Um, what we discussed at that meeting. That meeting was basically just to kind of get an idea where we stand in terms of the policy book and what areas we might like to focus on and follow up on this year. Um, the existing or proposed policies, that is policies we discussed maybe would be nice to have last year that we still need to uh, work on are uh, non-discrimination, homework guidelines, school board ethics, weapons in schools, hazard communication, which actually is on the agenda tonight with a uh, co-curricular position, evaluation for support staff, which was something that we agreed, agreed to with the, in the secretarial negotiations, scheduling for instruction, time on task. And I would add to that, um, because my memory was jogged by the newspaper locker searches, <laughs> something mm -hmm. um, that, that we have discussed and that is, once again, in the news. Uh, not in regard to Cape Elizabeth in particular, I hasten to add. Um, the policy subcommittee would also like to follow up on, on these issues this year, placement procedures and kindergarten screening, basically how the changes are going that we have instituted in the last year or two, and in fact those two issues we will be dis discussing at our next meeting on September 28th, um, Pledge of Allegiance, which we discussed a little tonight, flag placements, which is ongoing parent-teacher conferences, high school schedule, high school guidance issues, Pond Cove report card and progress reports, and fifth grade grading scale. Um, other issues that we discussed that we'd, we'd like to look at this year if we can are um, system-wide cheating policy, a policy on reading instruction, which we're basically going to have uh, kind of an introductory discussion of that at our next meeting as well, um, administrator training and evaluation, service learning and community service curriculum, um, our preschool program that's run out of the high school, system-wide drug curriculum and discipline policies. Um, so our next meeting will be held in Connie Goldman's office on Thursday, September 28th from 8.30 to 10.30, if anybody would like to attend. Thank you, Anne. Um, the next item on the agenda is unfinished business. The school board goals for 95-96 school year. Connie, do you want to go over them? Well, I'll set the context and you say obviously what you what I did. What you would like <laughs> to do. Um, during the summer, we had a workshop first with the administration and then um, the members of the school board joined that group to talk about tentative goals uh, it is our process to start in June 
and we usually go through two or three boiling down processes trying to um, come up with a list that isn't too long, it's manageable, and then really concentrate on that. So this is sort of part of a continuing story. One of the issues that came on uh, out of that discussion was how to just simply list things. I mean, a lot of these preliminary plans have um, sort of the long range purpose as well as the short range purpose and so forth. But at this stage in the game, we really want to boil it down to what are we really going to do? So um, interestingly enough, Beth gave me the summary sheet um, that is in your packet. At the same time, I had um, had a discussion with you telling you that um, we are under a state directive to do a plan to plan um, process. Uh, with a new wrinkle that has to do with federal monies. Um, some of you listened to me go on about that at length, and I'm not going to use precious meeting time to vent my feelings about that particular process. Nevertheless, I have, in fact, boiled down some issues and put in your packet because the next item on the agenda asks you to vote to expend federal monies. Uh, what this process is, is until we, we submit a document similar to the one that I have included in your packet, which has to do with what is our planning process for this year, um, we can't get that money. So the, uh, I hope the two things mesh. I have chosen not to put this in exactly the format that the state forms have asked for and have had numerous conversations with people explaining to them that I think we have a good planning process. We are working hard to get as many of our issues on a system-wide basis as possible. And I feel that we are in pretty good shape in that respect. And I do not think that the planning to plan or the plan process that the state is now promoting will be particularly helpful to us. Um, of course, I may not win that battle, but uh, I will certainly uh, keep you informed as to what happens. But as I had summarized things, I had come up pretty much with exactly the same list that Beth had. I, the only difference really in my primary list was the, um, was the Arts Committee, which I had simply put on the list of committees that had been already established with the charge and were ongoing. So if you look at the first two sections, I think they are a match. What I would like to point out to you just very briefly is how we intend to do these things. Our major goal projects for the year. Um, for those of you who don't have this piece of paper in front of you, we are going to uh, have a process to revisit the mission statement, uh, sometimes called Dialogue 2. Some of you have already been to a meeting on that. Um, I have worked with Carol Wishcamper, who is a consultant. We've tried to figure out what is the best way for us to have a core discussion on that. And after going through a number of, of um, meetings and discussions, Carol's given me a proposal, which in essence is for her to organize a series of focus groups, one group or two groups being uh, staff people and two groups being community and parents. Um, I believe that is the way we should go. I do not think that we're going to accomplish much at this stage by having simply a repeat of what we did four years ago and to have a fairly open-ended uh, kind of discussion. Uh, so that's my recommendation that we go with that uh, routine. I'm sure that in the process of planning that, a few other things will come up. And this does not mean that we're not inviting the community to participate in a number of other issues. But that is the, the focus instrument for that. The um, next thing on the list is science grant. Um, you've seen some of that process. It's essentially we have a core team of people. Uh, the first meeting is next week. We will, in fact, be meeting with the core teams or the steering committees from the other two districts. Um, each district will then have a larger core team of staff with parents uh, invited. And obviously, school board is invited to come to these meetings. I'll keep you informed. Uh, that will be going on in the other districts, too, and we will periodically be meeting in small group, large groups, that type of thing. Um, and of course, all of these processes include data collection, looking at the data, what is it telling us, and so forth. Uh, the third item on this list is the research stream, which already has been mentioned here. Um, I have a meeting of, uh, with a core group. Again, I'm kind of using the same model, I guess. Um, the three librarians and I have talked for at least the last three years on this project uh, because what we want to be is clear um, and have a product that we can actually 
in a process of involving a number of people have as our sense of what we expect for research in this school district. Uh, some of that could be projects, um, finished projects to give teachers a sense of what this, uh, what quality work looks like uh, at various stages of the game. The other, of course, is to involve uh, a number of content areas so that we are sure that we are teaching kids what the data is out there, how to access it, how to use our increasing networking capacities, and so on. But I also think, and in our technology committee original discussion, we got into things like ethics. How do we teach kids not to just pop up something off a CD-ROM and pass it in as if it were their work? And furthermore, I think we'd like to suggest we need to involve parents in this discussion because it obviously is not going to help your child if you are encouraging that kind of behavior. When I was, uh, years ago in the dark ages, when I was a middle school teacher, we worried about kids copying out of the encyclopedia instead of putting it in their own words. We now have a whole network out there of stuff, and we really have to be concerned about what research is all about, and it certainly isn't plagiarism. So we, we are concerned about that whole set of issues. Um, this is also an opportunity for us as a school system to think about what evidence is and how we teach to, um, students how to think about evidence. So that when we talk about research, we're not just talking about a finished 20-page research paper with footnotes and a bibliography. We're talking about living in the information age and being aware that you can f simply search for a few things, but you also know how to go about doing something more complicated. Um, I think it's important to teach children early on that not everything that's printed is gospel, that in fact there are criteria for what is good evidence and what is not good evidence, and what a bibliography, what's a useful bibli bibliography as opposed to one that is simply just a list of sources. How do you know you have a seminal source? How do you learn to recognize that some resources uh, and sources are more knowledgeable than others. In order to do this, what we have in mind is a sort of spiral curriculum uh, that starts with children early on in first, second grade, whenever they actually start maybe doing very simple uh, evidence, learning how to ask questions, how to find in, in responsible ways the answers to those questions, and build from year to year on that capacity. We have a number of ideas about how to do this. We have, we have many teachers in our system who are, in fact, doing a fine job in bits and pieces. What our project will do is to put those pieces out on the table, look at them, see where they're connected, what pieces are missing, and ultimately uh, come up with something that can be read by all our staff as well as our students, naturally and parents, um, and uh, we hope we'll have a consistency that will guide us in this important area. It's a, I love this project, <laughs> and I will be working on it. Um, the next item is um, staff development. We've already talked a little bit about that. Uh, the maintenance plan for the newly renovated spaces um, and the arts committee, which we established last year. The ongoing pieces of work that that we're committed to. Uh, certification is an issue that we need to revisit um, this year, but did talk about last year. Our technology committee, you've already had a report from that. The building committee, we, we really will be retiring the building committee. I guess some of us will hardly know what to do with our Thursday evenings, but we'll probably find something. And um, the uh, uh, arts education. And I thought it was remarkable that those are almost a um, cross section. I did notice that there was a reading committee on the board's list. I'm not sure. Um, I didn't put it on because I saw that as being folded into some of the others. But the, uh, I noted that you listed it under policy, and perhaps that's where it should be. Then the rest of the board goal sheet, as Beth has put it together, is a list of things that are not so much full board goals as requests from the board to have the individual buildings be aware that these are issues that have been out there on discussion and that you would like reports back on whether they can be done or not or whether they should be done or not up for some discussion. That's my understanding. 
these were really my notes that I was sending to Connie as we were asked to give um, feedback. So anyone else, please give their feedback, Anne. No, I, I like this. I, I like the way this is actually set up. I think it, this. I think this is readable. It's it's short. You know, it's to the point. You know, maybe we. I, I do think we need some backup documentation just to. You know, maybe something on each committee with its timelines, its membership, and, and that kind of thing. But I think this is, um, it, you know, if this is out in the buildings and, and out with the public, that this is something that, you know, they can latch on to better than some of this, you know, verbiage that we, we tend to get into that doesn't really tell them anything. So I, I like this as very direct and action oriented, and I think that's where we want to be this year. So I'm happy with this. Charlie? I agree. You did a good job. Some of well, us. Well, I think us. actually we need to maybe revise a little bit. I didn't have down the um, certification, and that is definitely an issue we need to work on. Um, and um, reading committee may be one that can come off and go under well, policy or. A, yeah, a lot, of, yeah, a lot of that is really in the research strand. Yeah. Um, anyway, and some of it, I think, and in fact, some of these issues under, you know, the high school will and all these things. I think the policy committee, they have some relation to policy and we can deal with them there. So this may need a little fine tuning, um, exactly what's on there. Any other comments? I, I think you can adopt these okay. as they are, um, and um, I, Yes, I will ask you under the next business item where I ask for approval to receive and spend federal and state monies to also um, consider that the plan to plan document which I've given you is included in that vote. Separate them out that way. Um, where would we like to put certification? I think that should be on <clears throat> the board goals. Um, I think it's a continuing thing because we. Uh, committees. Committee. Okay, let's put it under the continue the work of these committees. And um, Connie had Arts Committee down on the continuing committees. I just wasn't sure we had a charge and a timeline for that committee, and I think that's why I put it um, at the top. Do we have a formal charge and timeline? Uh, well, I only sure. met once. No, yeah, really I'm not sure. Really. So let's move it up to. The okay, end. let's keep it in. Keep it in the top category. Um, reading committee, I know, had been alive last year, or at least met mm -hmm. once, which is why I think I put it, I left it there, since it was something I was certainly interested in seeing continuing. If anyone feels that that should go off and go into policy, that's fine too, though. I think it should, because I think realistically it's the research part of that. I mean, that, that whole discussion of research came out of that committee originally, I think. You know, not mm -hmm. the not the system-wide committee, but the Pond Cove committee, I think, is where that germinated. And um, I think that's the major focus, and I think we need to look at whether we have some policy issues. I don't know what that committee has to do on its own this year. The reading committee. Yeah. So we could remove that from there. Mm. All right, let's remove the reading committee. Um, and I'm not sure the high school renovation is not a committee. It's more um, the work we, we plan to continue. Put that under high school will continue work on renovation? Um, I could say care for the building the way you sort of did under Pond Cove and Middle School. Instead of new, just say care for the building plus renovations. I'd actually maybe put it at the bottom under the school board will and just continue the high school renovation yeah. project or the high school five-year plan if that makes anybody feel. Um, that sort of straightens it up a little bit more in my mind. Does anyone else have something they want to throw in? I guess I'd, I would just feel more comfortable if, if we could say that we would adopt this with the understanding that we will have the timelines and the backup documents by our next board meeting. That sounds fine. I mean, they don't have to be real formal documents, but just something to flesh these out a little bit. Any other comments? Discussion? Someone like to make a motion? Charlie? 
I move adoption for of school board goals for 95-96 as proposed by our board chair with backup data and timelines provided by our next board meeting. Second. Second, Ann. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Seven zero. And who seconded that we would say? Ann did. Um, then we need a separate um, board vote. Is this under old business? Yeah, moving on, I'll, I have okay. to read the numbers too. Okay. Go on to new business. Yeah, this gets a little complicated, but it's, I'm trying to make it as straightforward as possible. Every year uh, we do receive some federal monies. Uh, people are always surprised that the feds actually give money to the locals. So in the state, about 6% of the state budget, give or take a little, or it's actually federal money. We certainly get far less than that because many of the federal funds are targeted for um, issues of uh, low income uh, or other kinds of issues that do not uh, impact this district as much. Nevertheless, um, there, every year we have a series of forms that we have to fill out um, and that these are all monies that are uh, quite restricted in what we can apply for, what we can use them for, and so I haven't listed everything there, but all of this, as I pointed out to you, is in our budget document. Each one of these is a separate little budget that is uh, listed in your appropriation control, so you have, you can keep a record of it. So the federal monies that we are uh, preparing the material for, we need a vote from you. Title 1A, uh, 26505 these are monies that we use primarily to support the uh, so-called Title I or Remedial Reading Program at Pine Cove. They cover for the, to the degree that they can cover. We do supplement them for the salary of the teacher who does Title I reading recovery. Title II, this year, sum of 4,733. We use these funds, form, formerly known and actually still currently known, uh, as Eisenhower grant funds to support math and teacher and science teacher staff development. Uh, Title IV, 8,281, we use these funds to support the drug education programs. This is the title specifically focused on such use, formerly known as drug-free grants. In Title VI, $8,903, we use these funds for additional library books and equipment. Um, the above funds are included in the IASA Consolidated Planning Grant. Um, in addition to these funds, we also must include in the board vote permission to spend 77720 under special education local entitlement. We use these funds to cover some staff psychological services, some specialized equipment, the use of consultants and evaluation, physical and occupational therapies, and staff development. All of these funds are covered by multiple directives about what we may and may not expend them for and require fairly extensive paperwork. We carry them in separate categorical mini budgets at the end of the appropriations report since they are not included in the regular budget. A single vote signifies your agreement to spend the funds. Any questions? Charlie. So are we moving to also accept your IAASA consolidated planning grant? Uh, it's unclear to me whether or not you are required to make that vote at this time. Um, but just in case, uh, I think I would assume that I have your implied consent. In other words, when I submit the paperwork, I can say <laughs> this board vote does okay. include your knowledge that this is my proposed plan to plan. Okay. So we really need two votes here. No, I don't you think so. All into one? It's, it's, okay. Again, the process is very okay. muddy, and I am okay. not clear. They don't say two votes. They say I do have to... Uh, submit the minutes of a meeting where you take your vote. This is a normal vote you take every year. Uh, and it is my understanding that you need to include the understanding that we will be, uh, we're under a directive to do a plan for plan year on the systemic planning, okay? And I don't know how to make well, that any clearer. <laughs> Who would like to make that motion? <laughs> Charlie. I move that we accept the superintendent's proposed IASA consolidated planning grant and accept and expend federal funds for Title IA, $26,505, Title II, $4,733, 
Title IV, $8,281, Title VI, $8,903, and Special Education Local Entitlement of $77,720, as so specified by the school superintendent. Is there a second? Second. Gail. Any questions or comments? Carla. Do we need to say, is, is any of that state money on the agenda? It says federal and state grants, but the motion it doesn't is matter. Federal. It's, is that okay it, if it, it's, um, it, it's okay to, to mix it in that way. I will amend my motion to accept and expend federal and state funds. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? All those in favor? 7 0. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is ratification of the secretarial contract. Scott got us all copies of all of the contracts. Thank you. Do I have a motion? Charlie. <laughs> Since we're spending money tonight, <laughs> I move acceptance of the secretarial aids contract for the 95 96 school year. Is there a second? Keith. Keith or Ann? Keith. Keith. <laughs> Any comments, questions? All those in favor? <coughs> Seven zero. All of our contracts are done. Except we <laughs> just received start. word that we are about to start, to start again. again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, it's like it was uh, <laughs> All right, you're the next item on the agenda is discussion and action on computer lease package. Well, or Connie, go ahead. <laughs> you have in your packet the language, um, and you know that this has become, I forget how many years this has been going on, I think it's two, but maybe my memory fails me. We now have a lot of legalities that we must be sure that we vote at a meeting. Um, it is not necessary for you to read this vote, but the vote is here, and the motion should carry this vote. Uh, let me clarify something. Scott, we had we have some other issues in here, vote plus an amendment or an addendum. That's all we need to... Okay. And this is the vote document, the one that says vote to be adopted and under and pursuant to the provisions of et cetera, et cetera. Charlie. <laughs> I move adoption of the computer purchase lease as stated, that under and pursuant to the provisions of Title 20 AMRSA Sections 1001 and 1055 the superintendent of schools be and hereby is authorized to execute and deliver a tax-exempt lease purchase agreement with Apple Computer Incorporated in the name and on behalf of the town of Cape Elizabeth by and through its school committee, the user, for computer equipment with an aggregate purchase price not to exceed $126,084 at all. Second. <laughs> Second, Gail. Yeah. Any questions or discussion? I just have a comment that it's lucky for Charlie. You didn't have to read the whole thing because there is not one period in this. <laughs> <laughs> it's one sentence. All those in favor? 7-0. Thank you, Charlie. Uh, next item on the agenda is personnel. We have a recommendation for a one-year math teacher, mm -hmm. Connie. Uh, and I explained in our um, in the board notes that um, you will recall last spring we had a resignation from uh, Christine Newell, math teacher at the high school, um, who felt that she would like to spend more time with her family, and so with regret we accepted her resignation, and we had um, the request that was granted for one year leave of absence for Pam Rawson, another high school math teacher. Um, in order to spend uh, some time with the Beacon School Initiative in Brunswick and um, we did in fact advertise and at that point Chris, Chrissy decided that um, maybe uh, that in fact she really wanted to come back so she went through the process we we did in fact talk to some other people but they, we know her to be a fine teacher 
And so uh, I am nominating her for the one-year position to cover the leave of Pam Rawson. Is there any question? Is there a motion? Someone else gets to do it. Um, <laughs> we yeah. accept Chris Newell um, for the one-year math position for the high school. Is there a second? Priscilla. Any other questions or comments? Anne? I'm sorry, I, I must be just kind of punchy tonight, but maybe some of us find that by the end of the summer we're ready to go back to work, you know, after spending it with our kids. Maybe two and a half months is enough. So anyway, I'm glad she's back. I didn't ask for this. All those in favor? 7-0. Next item on the agenda is a resignation. Mary... Mary Grabell, I included her, her uh, letter in your packet, and um, she has been a uh, teacher of uh, First Title I and then also uh, Reading Recovery, and she did ask for a leave last year and now has decided to resign. Can I have a motion? Priscilla. I move that we accept the resignation of Mary Grabell. Is there a second? Priscilla. I mean, sorry, Carla. <laughs> Am I second? Uh, any discussion? Carla? I just want to say that I know that she's done a very um, terrific job at Pond Cove, and I think some people will miss her. She was an early advocate of reading recovery, quite, quite vocal in her praise. All those in favor? 7-0. Nominations for athletic coaching positions. Okay, we'll get the right sheet here. Because um, we've had a couple of changes. Which one is the new one? I think it's the pink one. Pink. 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 Okay. I'm looking for my pink one. Here's, oh, I've got it. Got it. Pink. Wait a second. Thank you. Thank you very much. I know, it's, I know it is. Ah, here it is. Thank mm -hmm. you. I want to thank um, whoever was responsible, Keith, or whoever, for getting all of the resume items on there. Thank you. So for coaching positions, we have eighth grade boys soccer, Matt Whaley, seventh grade boys soccer, Matt Riccio, and seventh grade girls soccer, Jody Lewis. Any questions, Charlie? So we, we are no longer going to have a B team? Uh, we don't think we're going to need that. Okay. At this time. Carla? I move that we accept the uh, superintendent's nominations for athletic coaching positions for fall 1995-1996. I second those. Any discussion? All those in favor? 7-0. Thank you. Uh, we also have nominations for co-curricular positions for the 95-96 school year. And I would like to add one that came in this afternoon, so I haven't had a chance really to add it. That is, uh, you may recall that on the co-curricular we have natural helpers advisor. It has been in the past, Andrea Kerr. It's still Andrea Kerr, but they would like to split the position between Andrea and Katie Lisa. So the list is chem safe coordinator, Dan Reed, uh, team leader, grade three, uh, excuse me, Ann Caliandro, uh, we had appointed Lisa Martin earlier, but then she transferred over to um, Title I in Reading Recovery, so she, we needed a third grade teacher. Uh, department Head for Fine Arts at the high school, Dick Mullen, and Senior Class Advisor, Dwight Ely. And the Natural Helpers Advisors, Co-Advisors, Andrea Kayer and Katie Lisa. Carla? Does the um, ChemSafe coordinator also have responsibility in the middle school at all, or is that strictly high school? It's system-wide. System-wide. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Is there a motion? Anne? I move that we accept the co-curricular positions for the school year 1995-96 as read. Is there a second? Second those. Charlie. Any further discussion? All those in favor? 7-0. Uh, I will announce that the next meeting of the school board will be Tuesday, October 10th in the council chambers, um, and the finance subcommittee will be 
right before school building committee thursday september 28th school board policy subcommittee thursday september 28th also 8 30 in the morning we no further business entertain a motion to adjourn so moved second second all in favor meeting is adjourned Yes, I think it was the Tuesday. Oh, yeah, I didn't even notice that. Priscilla is here. Do the same. Are you Priscilla? I don't know. Should I save their names? They usually do.